It is officially day one of my Simpson Desert trip. See how much much oil's coming out of it. It's really not good, but but no. All right, it is officially day one of my Simpson Desert trip, and to say I'm I'm happy and excited is an absolute understatement. I'm I'm so stoked that this trip's um, actually going ahead I've been planning it for so long and it's almost almost have this feeling of disbelief that it's actually going ahead I have my fair share of nerves which to be honest I think is probably a good thing I've been a bit nervous to do this um, being such a big trip and so remote I uh, I think the extra nerves definitely help make you um, more prepared than you might need to be but yeah excited is an absolute understatement so keen today's plan is i'm obviously leaving the gold coast and my goal destination is going to be nindagully pub staying there for the first night it's going to be about 500 k's or so away sort of heading through towards um Canungra right now so we'll get past all these rubbish road works and start to make our way towards bloody Bow Desert and so on until we get to Nindagali. Oh man, it's probably been about two years, uh, maybe three years since I've been out here. This is Cunningham Highway. It's called Cunningham's Gap. And it's just beautiful. Cares to go. Man, that took like half an hour just, just sitting there waiting for um, traffic controllers to let us through. Just fueled up at Warwick. Had a quick, quick sticky beak over everything to make sure it's all sweet. I've had a little bit of drama with my counter shaft seal being quite leaky I've actually replaced it twice it's a little bit frustrating it's still leaking but nowhere near as bad as it was but it's just you know another one of those things I sort of I'm gonna have to keep an eye on as I put more and more K's through this bike uh, doing this trip pretty common thing to happen with them but yeah it's just still something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on unfortunately Day two of our Simpson Desert trip. Just woke up, camped at Nindagully Pub last night. Had a really good sleep. Campgrounds here are pretty nice. I mean, it's just dirt and everything, but it's free, so you can't really complain. Uh, rolled in just as the sun was going down, set up camp, went over, had a beer, and checked out the pub and everything like that. So, yeah, pretty cool. Today, I'm sort of gonna try and high sail it out of here by maybe 7:30, 8 o'clock. It's about six now. I've got to catch up with Paz at Burke. That's where we're going to stay tonight. Yeah, stay at Burke tonight. That'll that'll be um, yeah the first time I've ever ever met him. So it should be fun. The next day we'll we'll end up trying to get to Camera Corner. But um, yeah, I'm going to go over, get some bloody coffee in the system. Just do a quick once over on the bike and then start to pack some stuff up. So we'll get stuck into it. All right. We're out of here. So when I plan my 
my route to go to Bloody Simpson, I actually hadn't intended on staying at Nindagully Pub, but I had a mate that's sort of been out here before and he stayed there and said, seriously, you got to go in, have a meal, have a beer and camp there the night, it's really nice and um, yeah, he wasn't wrong, so old Danny boy, if you're watching this, appreciate the tip mate, you're absolutely on the money. Just talking to those blokes at the servo there. There's no fuel because they're um, unmanned. That servo is unmanned, and you need to use a card, obviously, to to pay for your fuel. And at the moment, there's no service. The internet's down here, so <laughs> no one can get fuel, including myself. But apparently. The next town down is called Hebel, and that allegedly has fuel. It's about 70 k's away, which I'll make pretty easy. So I'm gonna keep going on and get to there and go and get some some go go juice. Stinger. B just hit me in the leg. <laughs> it just went ass first into my leg. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. Oh, I'm sure that's gonna swell up. So I've just sort of pulled over here to check my phone and stuff like that. I've got a little bit of service. I got a message from Paz, the guy that I'm supposed to be meeting in Burke tonight. He's he's actually um, decided he's gonna pull out of the trip. He said he's having some uh, some health issues and stuff like that, which is a bit unfortunate. You know, these these things happen and just kind of got to deal with it as it as it comes. So up until this point, it's it's been a a solo trip and um, and it looks like it's gonna continue to be the whole way through so I'm just gonna stick to the plan keep keep heading towards Burke um, get there tonight and everything like that and then continue along with the trip so fun times all right Hebel Reset that. Gaduga. I think that's how that's pronounced. Gaduga. There's not much in this little town. Hey guys. What are you on? What are you emus everywhere out here? <laughs> These are just the ones that I'm coincidentally filming as I pass them. It's been heaps. More out there. So cool. Alright, so I've just sort of stopped here. Maybe about, I don't know, 200 k's away from Burke. 150 k's away from Burke or something like that. Just having, having a smashing down a cliff bar. But um, I'm just giving the bike a break. It's starting to really sort of piss out <laughs> this oil out of that seal now, which I'm not feeling great about. But um, I obviously bought, I bought extra oil, um, you know, in case it did sort of start leaking. And obviously, because it chews oil as well. So I do have oil there. I'm still pretty confident that I could do the crossing with it so I'm going to persevere um, but yeah it's definitely definitely cause for concern it's not looking too crash hot but um, yeah, I'll give you a bit of a look hang on sort of see the oil leaking off the um, the retaining bracket that goes over it and the screw that goes into it um, and then sort of <laughs> back up under here it's really sort of coated the engine and starting to come out as you can sort of see what's going on here right yeah you can sort of see how much much oil is coming out of it it's not it's really not good but, but no push on a bit further just have a look at it at Burke and see see how much oil I'm chewing through I'll check the dipstick now by this point, I was considering getting another seal sent to my next accommodation. However, this would make the third seal in as many months. 
started to question whether something more was going on with my bike. So I just maybe put 50 mil in it. Should bring it pretty, pretty full on the dipstick. A little concerning, but oh well, like I said, I'll just monitor it. Go. I had to turn around for these ones. They are so bloody cute. Look at them. Look at the little babies. How cute is that? What are you doing? Try and be a nice guy and let these people pass. actually spoke to them at the servo. Uh, they were really nice. It really is one of the coolest things about sort of traveling, especially on a bike. Pretty much every time I stay somewhere, I'll always get someone come over, like some older bloke, telling me how he used to have a, a KLX 650 or a bloody a DR 650 or something like that. And, you know, he loved it and he wished he still had it. And, where are you going? What are you doing? They just love a chat. They love talking about it. And to be honest, so do I. It's, you know, it's cool to hear other people's stories and stuff like that and share your own. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's part of the travel thing, I guess. You know, get to pull up somewhere and chew someone's ear off and let them do the same thing to you about, about you know, your, your adventures and stuff. So, they're very cool. place left in Burke with accommodation what the absolute F um, old mate super nice of him <laughs> he's let me lock my bike in the shed here just because it's uh, a little bit shady around here but he's also said literally everyone else in the the um, cabins that I'm staying in they're all like coppers there's some sort of I don't know, bunch of cops staying here or something like that so um, makes me makes makes me feel like my bike's a little bit safer anyway but yeah legend let me lock me me bike in there and everything like that so um safe and sound overnight and no one pinches anything off it oh well, that's where i stayed last night i stayed at the burke riverside motel gotta head off to get some fuel now so yeah find a servo fuel up start to make my way to Cameron's Corner. Yes, yeah, so obviously today's plan is to get to Cameron's Corner. I just fueled up. I've got to get to Tibberborough so I can get some fuel there. Then continue on to Cameron's Corner where I'm, I'm going to just camp for the night. It's going to be another big day on the bike. So I'm hoping she holds up for me. I think my new favourite thing has to be baby emus, <laughs> they're so cute. <sighs> Just pulled over to readjust my terrible packing. That seal is just furiously leaking. <sighs> Fuck sakes. I haven't come all this way to get fucked over by a seal. was a relatively minor problem, now evolving into something a bit more serious, my frustration began to grow. I just couldn't accept that my trip might be over so soon. That is one dead, very large pig. One thing I'm actually pretty surprised about is how windy it is out here. Like I knew it was going to be windy, but 
not that much it's just it's pretty bloody intense like <laughs> just relentless wind you don't really get a break from it it just feels like you're constantly just riding into a massive headwind it's um yeah surprised me a bit and the dirt roads begin oh man just riding into that <laughs> dust dust storm ride a little bit faster now get a bit more air going through the old girl <laughs> kids waving to me and so he should I'm on a bloody motorbike some more water and some snacks and stuff like that gave the bike a bit of a chance to cool down it's running really hot to be honest <laughs> every time I pull over I keep checking to make sure it um it isn't boiling the coolant it actually got a little bit close yesterday I thought oh no here we go just keep on top of like watching the bike listening to it so I sort of get an understanding of what's going on with it instead of just blindly pinning it you know through the heat so keep going onwards to Tibaboro from here. As I punched out the K's I tried not to dwell on the bike situation. After all I was lucky enough to be out adventuring through places I've never even been before. Jump into three states in under five seconds. One, two, three. <laughs> this cheers me up a bit, that's cool. I still can't believe that this thing goes for five and a half thousand Ks. <laughs> 